Okay, well there's good news everybody. I'm back on the air because I've now finished building my workbench. So it's time for another episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Anyway, I decided to start the new season of Call Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with a bit of a bang. Because I decided to see if my solid state Tesla coil still works. So I plugged it in and this happened. As you can see here, one of the MOSFETs has completely blown its arse out. But I think I know what caused that. If we look up here, you can see this resistor and this capacitor have gotten pretty friendly with each other. And I think that a spark jumped between the two and destroyed my MOSFETs. But at least the driver circuit is still okay. So I decided I'd build a completely new tester coil with a completely different circuit and see how well it works. Unfortunately, it was a bit of a flop. This is about the best I got out of it. Now, if you want to see that video, I will put it up. I do have it on my hard drive and I will upload it to YouTube if you want to see it. Although I must warn you, it's about half an hour long and it is really waffly. Probably like this video is going to be. But like I was saying, even though I've got a secondary of about 15,000 turns and I'm using a bipolar primary with about 30 volts input, it really wasn't anything spectacular. I mean, it wasn't anything like this. Yeah. And it certainly wasn't anything like this. Which is probably the scariest thing I've ever built. But hey, where's the fun if there's no danger? Even though this thing wasn't really all that dangerous, I mean, I touched the sparks and I'm still here. It tingled a bit, but it didn't kill me. So anyway, this is the Tesla coil I'm going to build. It's based on a circuit I got off the internet, except I've modified it a little bit. So instead of using a gate drive transformer, it uses an IR2110 gate drive chip, which can provide the high and the low side. And I've decided to use that because, well, you know my luck with gate drive transformers. They've never really worked all that good. And at a later date, I'm going to build this circuit here, which is my own design. And we'll see how well that works. As you can see, there's almost nothing to it. But anyway, enough waffle. Let's get on and build this thing. Okay, so I've built up this part right here. Hopefully I'm showing it in the camera. I don't know if I've got this on manual focus or autofocus. Got a little CD4046 chip in there. And I'll just turn it on. And use my probe of science to show you that it's actually doing something. As you can see, we got a nice square wave there. Let me just center that. Shows that's working. Even though I've got Nothing else connected to it, so it is actually doing something. Let's just see if we can measure the frequency. Let's see what we got. These are my other probes of science. Right about. It's a bit weird, 277 kilohertz, but I'm sure when this is all in the circuit and it locks onto the output of the Tesla coil, that frequency is going to be whatever the resonant frequency of the secondary is. So the next thing I want to do is put in the logic chips or inverted chips or whatever you want to call these. There's a little bit of a problem. Now I don't have any 40106N chips. So I'm going to use 74HC14s instead. It's exactly the same pinout, exactly the same, does exactly the same thing. The only trouble is I'm going to have to change this supply rail to 5 volts. I'm going to put a resistor here, and the internal diodes in the chip will protect it from going any more than 5 volts, so that'll, that'll be just fine. Alright, so I've got the other little chip in, and it all seems to be working pretty good. So, we've got our two square waves here, one which is a inverted version of the other one. And I've had this running for about 5 minutes, and uh, nothing's blown up, so I know this is pretty good. Nothing's getting hot. And this still works as before. Still got a little bit of a frequency adjustment there. I think this might be like fine and coarse tuning. 
I'm not exactly sure, but I'm sure it will all make sense when this circuit is made. Because remember, I didn't design the circuit myself, and I don't know everything about this chip. I mean, I know a little bit about it, but I don't know everything about it, so... I'm just putting things together and hoping that they work. So the very next thing to do is put in our gate drive chip, which is this here. IR2110. Now this is the solid state equivalent of a gate drive transformer. So no more complicated calculations and guesswork and trial and error and things like this. With this little chip here, that's going to solve all my problems. Look at that. When I move this around, the background moves. So this camera does have image stabilization. I was beginning to wonder about that. Okay, we're going to have to go again because this stupid camera was paused the whole time while I thought it was recording and paused the whole time I thought it was recording. Okay. So, anyway. I've built up the circuit here, so we've got to test the coil control circuit with our PLL hex Smith inverter and the gate driver chip. And at first, this wasn't doing anything. I just could not get any output out of this chip, and I puzzled over this trying to figure out what was wrong with it. Turns out that I should have tied pin 11 high. I mean, I should have tied pin 11 low, when instead, I tied it high, which put the chip into shutdown mode so it didn't do anything. But anyway, I've taken care of that now. I've just got this connected up to a dummy load here. And I'm monitoring the output on the scope, and as you can see, it seems to be working absolutely perfectly. Okay, the waveform is a little bit ugh. But I think that's mainly due to the gate capacitance of the MOSFETs here. Shouldn't really be a problem. So anyway, the next thing to do is to connect this up to a coil and see if it works. Okay, well, one final thing before I connect it up to a coil. There is going to be a lot of RF energy coming off the coil. So, got to shield this thing. So I made a nice foil box. It's actually wood, but it's got foil around it. So we've got a power supply for the control board. The control board itself, and the output MOSFETs. And over here is where the connections to the coil are going to be made. This one actually goes to the coil. This goes to the rectified AC negative. This goes to the rectified AC positive. And I forgot to put the feedback antenna in, which is going to go in right there. So, after that, just need to make a metal lid for this thing so it's completely sealed from RF radiation. And I'll put my coil in and my capacitors to complete the half brush circuits. And we'll see if this works. The only trouble is that the MOSFETs I've used are IRFP 260s, so gonna have to limit the supply to 120 volts at the most. Will this thing work? Or will it go up in flames? Will it go out with a bang? Or will it just go out with a whimper? I have absolutely no idea if it's gonna even do anything. I'm a little bit concerned about this antenna wire being so close to the tin foil. I think that might impede the signal a little. Mm -hmm. Plugged in the signal. I plugged in the control box. So I'm going to turn this on and see if anything happens. Well, we have oscillation. Because my little RF detector did actually detect something, but we're not getting any breakouts. Oh, the meter is definitely peaking, so it's not giving us any breakout yet. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse the connections on the primary. And just see if that improves anything, or if it makes it worse. It definitely shows that the half bridge is working, and it is putting something into the coil. Let's just see what that does. And not so much. So, we had the primary round the right way the first time. Okay, I know that now. Okay, so I've reversed the connections on the primary. Now we know which polarity we need. So it shows the PLL is working and the oscillator is working. Everything's pretty much working. So I'm going to step up the voltage to about 
73 volts AC, and let's see what that does. I don't know if that will give us any breakout, or if something will explode, or quite what's going to happen, but we'll see. Hmm. Still no breakout. Right, well, I'm just going to do a few little um, experiments here, because I'm going to see what these... If, perhaps twiddling these potentiometers, although... Oh yeah, you can see it. If perhaps turning these potentiometers is going to give us any improvement whatsoever. And I'll be back. Well, adjusting these potentiometers definitely has an effect. I've turned this one almost all the way to the left. I don't know which one that is in the schematic. But it does do something now. Now this is on about 50 volts input. And as you can see, we're getting output now. And this is much better than what I was getting before. It doesn't look very much on the camera, but it's working, so it's looking pretty promising. And that was at about 46 volts AC input, so that's about 60 volts, about 65 volts, something like that. All right, um, I'm going to boost it to 82 volts input. <sighs> that's 82 volts input. So it's looking promising, we have a PLL Tesla coil, and it's working really good. I'll just do a thing at 36 volts, in, I mean, 46 volts AC. I like this. I like this a lot. This is about 93 volts in, which is going to be about 130 volts DC. This is without the main filter capacitor connected. That looks pretty good. However, you've got to remember, I'm running this ballasted. So I could increase the power. And it's even better! I so hope this camera is picking this up good. Because my camera kind of... Well, my camera doesn't suck, but it doesn't seem to be able to pick up sparks very good. Anyway. So the next thing I'm going to do... Well, I'm going to leave this capacitor disconnected for now, but we're going to try on the full 127, well, 120 volts that this transformer can provide. So that's going to be about 170 volts DC going into this circuit. Let's just see if anything got hot. That's um, not really warm. Just barely warm. We'll see what we can get. So yeah, definitely, even at the lower voltages, just at a half bridge is definitely the way to go. And I've measured the resonant frequency of this while it's running, and it's about 380 something kilohertz. I forget, I think it was like 383, something like that. But shows everything's working, so let's do the big test. Right, so we're ready to do this experiment. I'd just like to point out that I've got the main filter capacitor disconnected because I really don't think it makes much difference to the spark length if I'm running this constant wave or 100 hertz unfiltered DC. Also, that's a bit easier on the transistors, so this is how I'm going to have it. Also, I've reduced the camera's shutter speed to about 50 frames per second, whereas before I had it on 100 frames. So, you should be able to see the sparks a little better. So this is on the 46 volt tap on the transformer. Now we're going to go to 82 volts. Just make sure I'm not shorting out any of the other taps. Yeah. Alright, let's use the 93 volt tap. 93 volts. And now... 113 volts. Oh. 117 DC volts. 257 watts. Yeah. Some of you are like, oh my god! You know who you are. And that's it for now.
Okay, so there we go. That's just about it for now. And everything survived. Nothing blew up, which is a really good thing. I got to see some arcs. Now, I did actually try turning this up a little bit more to see if it would produce a little bit more output, but it was about the same, so... There's no point filming that. And well, there you go. My PLL Tesla coil. Everything inside is still A-OK. -okay. And I'm going to leave you with the schematic. And that brings us to the end of another Tesla coil video. A lot of people ask me why I do this kind of stuff. Well, they don't ask me directly, but I've seen the kind of comments that some people leave on my videos. Why is he doing this kind of stuff? He's stupid. I'm not stupid. I do this kind of stuff because I like to experiment. I like to see what works best and what doesn't work so good. And, well, I've got a bit of a passion for this kind of stuff, you know, seeing sparks fly. And yes, I take no responsibility for anybody who tries this themselves and injures or even kills themselves, although I don't think this thing would have actually killed me. Well, there's no way it would have killed me. So anyway, I'll just go over the schematic and the changes I made to it. So, uh, this bit here is exactly the same as it was in the original schematic. The changes I made here, I used a 74HC14 hex smith inverter chip with a 5 volt supply and I put a resistor in here, which I haven't drawn, so I better just draw that in there which was a 10K 10K resistor and the lead's just broken off my pencil and then instead of using a gate drive transformer, I used a gate drive chip now the only downside to using these is that you don't get isolation and of course if your MOSFETs blow it's going to blow that as well. I added a couple of reverse diodes on the MOSFET gates to discharge them after each cycle. I've used IRFP260 MOSFETs and I've changed these capacitors here to one microfarad each. So that's pretty much how it goes. Now, of course, I didn't get the full 117 volts AC into this thing, which would have been about 160, 170 volts. Round about that voltage, though. The maximum amount of DC voltage I got into this was about 117 volts, but you could see that even that was pretty impressive. Thing is, I don't dare to run this unballasted because, you know, I took a lot of time making this. And I don't want to just blow it up if something goes wrong, so... Burst is there for safety reasons mainly. That way I have some control over the amount of current because I use a room heater as my ballast and I've got different heat settings on that so I can switch in the different elements so I can control the amount of ballast that goes into this thing. Anyway, I think I've rambled on for long enough now so I'm going to stop and I don't know what I'm going to do in the next video, I might make another Tesla coil, I might repair another tape recorder, I might do something else entirely differently, I haven't really planned that far ahead yet, but anyway, that's it for this video, so until next time, goodbye. Even though my primary has about 15,000 turns on it, and I was using a bipolar primary with about 30 volts, it didn't really work good. And of course, because I'm trying to do my recording here, Mum has decided to hoover, giving us background noise.